This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Annie, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me on this journey. We'd like to thank and acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy Naren Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Albert Lorenzo, Lifelinded Fool, Green Man, Davis Ferreira, Margaret, Big C, Bennett Williamson, and Dylan C. And before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome Death's Little Helper to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really, truly could not do this without you. In this episode, we're talking about Chapter 28 of... Crossroads of Twilight. Yeah, chapter 28 is a cluster of rosebuds. Yes, it is. So we're here. We're getting there. Yep. We're moving through things. Yep. And? Returning to a Matt perspective. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Finding out where those guys are. There's a relationship dynamic to talk about. Still traveling. Uh Uh-huh. We're just traveling. Yeah, not very far. Not very far. But look out for that crazy Saldan who's looking for his wife. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay. Oh, stay yeah. clear of that guy. Wild rumors flying uh, all over the place. <laughs> well, we'll see what that... We have We have to talk about what the rumors are, too. Okay, There's, fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I thought for this fun fact, there's a little tidbit of information we get that I want to talk about now because I've had this one in the wings for a little while, Ooh. and I figured, hey, it was mentioned, so why not? So in this chapter, we had Noel once again talking about Shara stuff. There's yeah. just like a little tiny conversation. He's talking to Oliver about the women who can channel in Shara, and they're called the Ayad. And we have like a bit of a collection of information on the Sharans that we've accumulated over the series so far. Okay. So I figured, why not now? Sure. Okay. So back, if you remember, in Lord of Chaos, we had Samael and Grendel having a big conversation because Samael thought that Grendel wanted him to believe that she was interested in Shara because she had kidnapped like the rulers of Shara, if you remember that. Yeah. It's kind of a big deal at the time. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, and then she went on a bit of a tangent saying that the channelers are called the Ayad and live in their own small little towns and they avoid everyone else and they never channel without permission or on the orders of the rulers, the Shabote and the Shaboan. And the Ayad are the real power, and they're the reason that the rulers actually are in power, and they only live for seven years before they, in quotes, die. Okay. Right? So, I looked up some real-world inspiration on the Ayad. Okay. So, here we go. So, the name Ayad means one who is an able strengthener, and it's a Muslim name meaning powerful and able. And the name Ayad and the roots of the word is actually very prominent in the Quran. And specifically, there is the Umayyad Caliphate, which was the second caliphate, which is like the ruling body, that was established after the death of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, and it was ruled by the Umayyad dynasty, and the people were known as the Umayyads. Okay. So it's a very close... Sure. Sounding thing. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But there's actually a little bit more too. So at its greatest extent, the Umayyads had one of the largest empires in history, like in the real world in terms of area, covering over 11 million square kilometers or over 4 million square miles. So huge dynasty. And the interesting thing we get here too, and we actually did hear this back in Lord of Chaos as well, but there's a few different names for Shara. And one of those names is the Kodansin. Now, when the Umayyad Empire was toppled around 750 CE, and the survivors of the dynasty established themselves in Cordoba. So you have in Wheel of Time, the Ayad and Kodansin, and then in the real world, you have the Umayyad and Cordoba. Okay. Close enough. And there's a couple other hints, but I figured that was a good summary. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Yeah. All right, well, the last time we were here, we were joined by Tyler, and we talked a lot about Perrin and winnowing wheat Mm -hmm. of weevils. Yeah. And then we cut off a hand. Yeah. Chopped chopped some guy's hand off. Yeah, we didn't make a ton of progress on the, like, the how do we get Fael out thing. Mm -mm. We didn't. It was like, oh, no, I guess we didn't get enough information, so we'll keep trying. That's That's kind of where we left it. Yeah. Yeah. How many more hands is Perrin going to have to chop off? Well, hopefully none. That was kind of the point of that entire... Yeah, but what about the new prisoners coming in? They're not going to be as easily 
wait, they have to see it, you know? Oh, maybe, maybe. And we don't have a lot of chapters left in this no, book. No, especially considering he's left his axe behind, so... Yeah, yeah, how is he gonna do that? But... Well, he'll just go back and get it. Mm-hmm. That's my prediction. Yeah, I don't think did. he's actually <laughs> leaving that behind. <laughs> yeah, this is not the time to talk about Perrin more, No, though. I know. Okay, but that was just last time. Yeah. Okay, but last time we were with Matt... He was with the traveling show yeah. with Luca and everybody mm-hmm. escaping Abudar after a big scene that we didn't actually get to see. Yeah. And they were waiting and then they left. That's right. Yeah. And now we've left and we're waiting. Yeah. Yeah. And we're moving slowly. And yeah. we're going to talk so about that. So slowly. Yeah. A little bit. You know, it's... We we actually get like a, a location stamp kind of sort of. Okay. I'll need help with that. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. It's not far. That's the thing. <laughs> okay. Not far from Abu Dhar. Yeah, it's not 30 miles. At one point, like halfway through the chapter, it's like, oh, we're not even 30 miles out of Abu Dhar yet. Ugh. And then they get across a river. So mm. not. it's not that we're not moving quickly. No. Yeah. Okay. It's and we got to like watch a- out because we do know that we have some guys mm-hmm. who are out looking for us. Yeah, which is really funny because we can talk about it, but there's a solid possibility that they're like further than the circus. Because they're just a collection. Like, the circus is moving so slow. Yeah. That's true. And they sat around and waited. Yeah. Yeah. They might be already outside the area that Matt and the circus are within. Maybe. So, I mean, we can speculate, but let's get into it. All right. So, chapter 28, a cluster of rosebuds. And the chapter symbol is the five dice for Matt. So, we're going to enter in our Matt perspective. They are traveling still. And since... They left Ebu Dar. Everything has been pretty terrible. It's yeah. still raining. It's still cold. Like we just talked about, they're moving super slow. Yeah, that's what's happening. We get a lot of recap because if you forgot also, there's a reminder of the terrible backstory of Matt and Geenan that they're yeah. like running away from the jealous Shanshan nobleman who's probably hunting for his wife. Oh yeah, that's their which is, yeah. made up story. Yeah, the cover yep. story. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And that's going to be important for later on this chapter. Because yeah. that's supposed to be a thing still. Yeah. And then we get Luca talking about how he wants to go even slower. Mm-hmm. And Matt's like, oh my gosh, no. Yeah, because yeah. there's like tons of tiny little villages and he still wants to make money because it's like, Matt, you're not paying me enough to not stop and, and try and Matt make money. And Matt yes, I am. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Luca thinks, no, you're not. So, I mean, who do we really believe? Well, Luca just wants more money. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Matt is hanging out with his men, and there aren't very many of them left, and we get a bit of a recap about his soldiers, Yeah, and they're arguing about putting a tent up because it's raining and everything's terrible, and they're going to be out guarding women at night, so the tent doesn't even really matter. Yeah. Vannon is complaining that it'll take the group until the end of summer to even reach Lugard. Do you remember who Vannon is? The horse thief guy. Yeah, he's like the master horse thief guy who's like big, but he's still really agile and stuff, yep. and then he only has well matt only has four of his red arms left and if you recall they originally left with about a dozen oh i did not recall that yeah so there's about eight who died in the whole abu dar adventure with the golem the boat like all that stuff yes so it's not great no not good Mm -hmm. so matt's trying to sound more confident he's trying to get them all you know rah rah don't worry spring will be here soon yeah we're for sure Going to move faster in the spring. <laughs> yeah. Don't even worry, guys. It's going to be like, so good. Wow, we're really sticking here this long. Yeah. This is actually a good point to look at the map, too, because we find out here that they're for sure heading towards Lugard, and they're on the Great North Road. So there is actually the road you can see that kind of points directly to Lugard from Abu Dhar. Oh, so that's, okay. that's the road they're going on. They're not going through the country. They can't. Yeah. They're going on the big main road. Okay. So, but it is kind of interesting because with Matt, like, what the heck is Matt's purpose right now? Like, yeah, what's his what's mission? Yeah, what's his plan? He, like, he literally doesn't have any. Escape. Yeah, yeah. Escape. Yes. Without being caught. But, like, with all your people, with some people, with two on, like, yeah. why are we... <laughs> because easily at this point, Matt could leave. Matt, Tom, Julian, they could just leave the circus. Yeah. And leave everybody to their own devices and, like, bye. Except the problem is that Matt actually does have a moral compass and he's not just going to leave all these women that he feels responsible for. Yeah, he yeah. He helped them escape, and now they're all undercover together. They're all sort of in it together. And so I think he feels connected to them. Yeah, but I mean, what's the end game for that, too? Because, yes, you want to help the Aes Sedai escape. But, I mean, you really have. And at some point, at what point are they 
safe enough that you can I leave know. them, Doesn't you know? Doesn't he want to deliver them, like, to, to like, the, to the White, White Tower? Tower? Is that where we're going? Does Matt want to do... Is that safe enough once you're at the White Tower? Kind of seems crazy, because he originally went to Abu Dhar because he was following Elaine and Nynaeve, because he was supposed to, like, help Egwene Because originally Matt sent him there. Or, no, Ran. That's yeah. what I meant. Ran sent Matt there. Yeah. And then that didn't turn out well because of misinformation. Yeah, because he was supposed to get Elaine to Camelin right. and also help Egwene, but then he kind of he got left behind because the gateway thing, and he went back for Oliver. So right, like wh- he should be probably going to Camelin, debatably, because that's the mission Rand kind of oh, sent right, him on. Right to make sure Elaine's there. Yeah, and yeah. like to help that, but like, what are we doing? Yeah, we're stuck in limbo with because, Matt. Yeah, that, we are. That's the is. issue. That's that's that like a is main the issue. Mm-hmm. No real purpose yeah Yeah. and that's kind of matt's thing too because like way back even in after ruidian it's like what's your purpose matt what are you doing yeah like where is his whole (laughs) army right now isn't it with Egwene at tarvalin no 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 no. like his band of the red hand yeah no they left so they were with elaine they were heading back to abu dar because they're like matt needs us so we're gonna head towards abu dar and you're thinking hey we're gonna maybe run into them at some point yeah and I would hope that that should happen, but it just, it hasn't. Not this chapter. Where's, where, where are they? Uh, where's the band? Where's the band? <laughs> How do we get in communication with them? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Huh. I mm-hmm. forgot that that happened. Yeah. He has a whole big army. Right. So. And it feels like, and who's the guy who's leading it? It's Talmanis. Talmanis. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the guy. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's get back to that guy. <laughs> Would Elaine accept help from them? Or is that still not... That doesn't Well, they count? already left. No, I know. Let's say... Like, hypothetically? Hypothetically, Matt meets up with them. Ooh. They travel to Cablin and... Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Elaine employs them. Still seems like know? a foreign army, but, I mean, she's but hiring mercenaries. Exactly. Like, everybody who's part of her army right now mm-hmm. is a mishmash of foreign people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're at not least wrong. Yeah. then Matt could go be the general. Of Elaine stuff? Yeah. I mean she needs someone. Better than Brigitte doesn't Brigitte, want to do it. Who yeah. does not want it. Where's Gawain? What the heck are you who doing? We have no idea where that guy is. Well, and we have a little also, bit of an idea. Also, he's probably not very good either because he's Gawain. <laughs> yeah. We can just assume. <laughs> well, I mean he, he he trained for it. He hypothetically should be good yeah, in that position. Yeah, but like training is way different than actual experience. That's so. fair. Okay. Anyways, that's uh that's kind of what's going on. Yeah. So we're moving slow. Yeah. And That's yeah. about it. Oh, also, Luca, crazy, crazy idea, Luca. He's saying, I wish everything in my circus could be under one giant tent. And Matt's thinking, That's crazy. What a ridiculous idea to have one giant tent for your entire circus. Isn't that a three ring circus? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It's just a fun thing because he's like, Ah, oh, why why not put a palace on wheels while you're at it? Uh So it's just one of those ridiculous things that clearly is... A real thing? A real thing in our world, but like not in this world, at least yet. Okay. And to to Luca invents it. Mm. I would have to assume that's the evolution. I assume he does, yeah. Okay, but Matt is super stressed out because the circus is traveling on this big main road and they're moving super slowly and we get that there are lots of groups of Sean Chen settlers all over the place with their weird animals and their weird livestock that they shouldn't have brought here because yeah. <laughs> they're going to disrupt everything. Mm-hmm. But there's also groups of soldiers everywhere that mostly ignore them. Yeah. But that's still really stressful. Yeah, yeah, because he's trying to avoid them, but they can't. Considering but... they have the literal kidnapped... Daughter of the Nine Moons. Daughter of the yeah. Nine Moons. Yeah, and Matt's whole thing is, yes, Tuan did say, I'm not going to try to escape. But he, the entire time, this chapter is thinking, why won't she? Like, she's waiting for the perfect opportunity to actually get free. Right. He doesn't really believe her because it's kind of a crazy situation. Yeah. So if the soldiers were to come check out what was going on here, things would go horribly. Yeah. And so Matt is understandably very stressed out about all of it. Yeah. And they are checking the horse warrants because Luca has that from yeah, Suroth. right. But they're not actually counting the horses right. to see if they match up with the warrants. So Matt's also freaking out about that. Because... Because if they count, then They it's, don't match up. They don't match up, yeah. And then, then they would for sure, like, inspect the circus pretty heavily. So. Right. 
Okay. So Matt's also super annoyed because one of the evenings they were outside a tiny village. He saw three Aes Sedai sneaking back into the show. And it's like, hey, you're not supposed to leave. Yeah. Yeah. So as a reminder, so we got Edesina. Yep. Jolene and Teslin. That's right. Those are the three Aes Sedai. Yeah. And then matched up with them as we have the three Suldam, Rena, Seta, and Bethamen. That's right. So those are the six people that are basically 90% of this entire chapter. <laughs> Well, like the cause and problem and solution. No, too. <laughs> I would say that the interesting part is actually Tuon and Solusha. I didn't say the interesting part of the chapter. I said the oh. majority of the chapter involves these six women. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The interesting stuff is the 10% in the last couple oh, pages. Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd give it more like at least 35%. Oh, you know what? Fair. Okay. Yeah. It's not... I was exaggerating. Yeah. I would okay. say that goes on a lot longer, but. <laughs> it felt like forever. <laughs> yeah. This all feels like forever. <laughs> When yeah, are we gonna get to the fireworks factory? We only have we only have two chapters left I after can't... this and the epilogue, and then we're done. So hang in there. <laughs> Why would Robert Jordan write a book where nothing happens? See, I'm see, just this is, trying to understand. This is the thing. This is why there the frustration. Yeah, there has to be something that happens in the next two chapters because. Somebody please tell me. Well, one why. of them one of them is my favorite chapter of the book. Clearly, it yeah. has to be at this point. <laughs> <laughs> what if you just pick no favorite chapter? I opt out. <laughs> I opted out of picking a favorite chapter here. Uh. <laughs> I liked Rand the Rand stuff in where the people showed up, you're like, Whoa, low gains here. <laughs> but then we promptly leave and don't find out anything about that. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. It would be better if you can go fast through it and then just move on to the next book. See, I think it's worse for me right now. Yeah. yeah. I mean you could crush this. And then this you book. slowed me down to like one chapter. I did. I yeah. did. It was just a lot of page numbers that we can't can't do the notes on. Yeah. We, have we could st- have. Well we could have pared <laughs> this right down. We could have done it. That's okay. It's too late now. So let's just let's just do this. Okay. So we got them sneaking in. I'm trying to have fun. In. I am trying. Yeah. There's I, some fun stuff here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So we got the Aes Sedai sneaking out. The Sulam sneaking out to follow them and keep tabs on them because you know Aes Sedai can't be trusted according right. to the Sulam. Mm-hmm. And then they sneak back and they don't even see Matt, but he can feel that they're at least holding the power. And he's like, "You guys are crazy." Because of the Foxhead Medallion. Yes. Yeah. yeah exactly. And. Well, also, they shouldn't be channeling or holding power at all because we're trying to hide from the Shanshin and the right. Dhani and all this stuff where you can literally be kidnapped again, guys. Like, come yes. on, what are uh-huh. we doing? Yeah. And then Noel pops up. Ah, oh, right, that guy. Yeah. Top of the sus list. Is he, though? Oh, yeah. Why? He's so suspicious. He hasn't for... done anything. And then, oh, yeah, he's just reciting the prophecy of the dragon. Oh, I remember now. He just knows it all. He knows stuff. He knows stories. He's exactly. a good storyteller. Exactly. He's He like, just knows stuff. Oh, you want to tell very me? He's very You want to tell me? Yeah. Tom that... knows a bunch of stuff. He's yeah, suspicious of Tom. But... No, because I know his background. Okay. I don't know Noel's <laughs> background. That makes him suspicious. Okay. Okay. Duh. I'm just saying. He hasn't done anything bad yet. Anyway. Oh, yeah. He does pop up here. So. Yeah. Now, Matt is going to go into a wagon with these six women to confront them. Mm -hmm. And basically, we just get into a big argument. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, they don't want to stay hidden. Yeah. They're like, we're being well behaved. Relax. And then the Suldam are like, we can put the collar on them. Yeah. No problem If you want that, we can do the recon. We can still do that. (laughs) And then Matt's like, I'm going to take those collars away from you. And then he like never does. He doesn't because he thinks that's the only thing he actually has to hold over the Aes Sedai, even though he would never use them. Yeah. The threat of it is still there. And the most interesting thing I actually find in all of this is that Jolene, who's never been collared, Mm -hmm. doesn't think it's that bad. Yeah. Right? Whereas the other two kind of cower and hate it and Jolene doesn't get it. She doesn't understand it. Yes. Yeah, for sure. This is the point where we get that they're not even 30 miles out of Ebudar yet. Uh, and that's also why he's freaking out because, like, we're not actually that far away yeah. from the powerhouse of the Shanshan, guys. Yeah. Like, you can't be sneaking out right now. And we also learn that his hip is almost healed. Ah. Not 100%, okay. but if it ever does get 100% again, that's the... Uh, that's the thing about like hips, you know? Sure. You injure it real bad, it might not ever be 100%. That's fair. So. Now, Teslin tells Matt about some stuff that they did learn in the village while they're away. And she's like, see, I'm going to share information with you. Yeah, super important information. They're going towards Did, Ilian. We know that. We, we already know that. <laughs> we already know. Yeah. 
But Teslin's pissed off because she's from Ilian. Or yeah. So, or somebody is. I don't even actually know. Yeah, that's that was the basic premise. Like, one of the Aes Sedai is from Ilian. She's so, Aes Sedai, so she was so, like, leave behind your yeah, city that you're don't. from. But they don't because it's still your city. And I was like, I bet Rand won't like that if no. Deshaun should actually take over. Probably not. Ilian. That'll be bad. Don't worry. Rand has a plan. He's going to make a deal. Make a deal. Right? Yeah. Well, so is Perrin. Yeah. Throw Matt in there, and then we got a Ugh, trifecta. Everybody stop right? it. Okay. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> okay. The point of all of this is that Matt doesn't want them to go into villages to find information. He wants everyone to stay with the stupid wagons. Yeah. He's the got end. his guys who can find information if he needs it. Yeah. And, like, none of this info is actually that important no but you know i do get that the acid i don't want to be super confined they think that they're really good at everything yeah they think that they can do this better than anyone else can because they're acid i yeah so i get it i know but you were literally just clapped that you're just hostages and kidnapped and yeah, captured to money like but now they're gonna be careful they're yeah. so sneaky you don't I even cover get my it. face you don't even get it brett they're so sneaky i don't get it <laughs> Anyways, yeah. if you're feeling like this is being dragged on and on and on, it's because Matt also is feeling that way. Mm. So RG does a good job of putting you inside the like guy's head. Okay. Like, this is the feeling. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So we're commending it's Robert Jordan it's for intentional. making us feel this way? Yeah. Thanks, Robert Jordan. What else are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Throw the book in the fireplace? There you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the days pass by. Nothing really changes. And the Aes Sedai don't do a very good job of hiding who they are. No. Nope. They're still going out to the villages. And that's not good. But what, yeah. what you get to do... Yeah, and this goes again with the fake backstory where Matt and Agyanin are supposed to be the lovers and then the Aes Sedai and the Suldam are supposed to be the servants, but clearly they're not servants. Oh, not even a And anyone bit. who's looking at this should not be buying any of this story. But it, like, it doesn't really matter as long as people outside of the circus... Like, people inside the circus, we should be cool with them, right? Like, hopefully? I'm yeah, hoping? maybe. May, like, maybe? I don't know. Who's to say? Yeah. Okay. Now, there is a rumor that they dig up about Suroth. Yes. But I'm not really sure if it matters. Um, maybe. I would say maybe. Of all the pieces of information that we get this chapter, this might be one of the good rumors to talk about. Okay, tell me. So, the notable information is that it seems like an alliance has been concluded with someone powerful who was expected to give the High Lady Suroth access to many lands. And we get a little bit oh. later that Tom and Julin also dig up the same information that, yes, it sounds like Suroth has made some deal with some sort of, like, king or something, maybe. Oh. Hypothetical ruler. Is it Rand? Well, that would be very quick. Or is it Perrin? Or is it the guy who's been dealing and double backdoor dealing with the Shanshan for a while now? Who's that? And Perrin was like, hey... What's that about? Oh, Masima. Masima, yeah. Oh. We've literally had for like two books now. Okay. Like that was the whole thing with Files kidnapping. Okay, fine. Where File kidnapped, told Bear like, make sure someone escapes to tell Perrin that Masima is working with the is working with the Shanshin. And so, like, now Perrin is going to work with the Shanshin. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe hypothetically. Maybe, maybe. And like maybe, you know, dark friend Suroth. Has made a deal with possibly Masima. Yeah. Who has access to many lands. Like, again, it's all no, hypothetical. He but he's a crazy person. So. Yeah. Well, and Seroth is a dark friend. So, like, what's who's really pulling the strings <sighs> here? It's hard to say, really. Yeah. That's, that's about it with that. Okay. So, Matt really doesn't care much about this news that the Aes Sedai and Tuldam are giving him. Because he has Tom and Julin, who can root out information where he needs it. Yeah. Now, we do get that Tom is spending a lot of time with Oliver, playing snakes and foxes. Yep, that's the good game. And Julet right? is spending all of his time with Thera. Yep, who is Emma that, Thera. Yep. Yeah, doesn't really believe that <laughs> she used to be the Panarch of Terebron, be mostly because of how she's behaving. Yeah. She's not really acting like she's somebody who used to be a Panarch, but yeah. she has been through... A you know, lot. it's actually kind of crazy because, like, Amethera was the one that Elena Nynaeve rescued I from know. the literal yeah. Black Aja who was, like, torturing her. Yes. And she came out of that, like, pretty okay. Uh-huh. Because she, like, sent Nynaeve and Elena off with jewelry and she's like, I'm staying, it's cool, I'm good. Yeah. And that was after Black Aja torture. And then she spends time with the Shanchen and it's like, boom, like, we're done. She's yeah. broken. She's like a shell of what she was. Right. So... Yeah, 
Pretty, now, pretty harsh. Here's the thing about this. I just still am a little bit skeptical that she is Julin's like lady love. Really? I don't know why. I'm like, just why? I don't know, just because I was so uh, not believing of it for so long and I'm just still feeling like Do you not feel like they're kind of like No. I don't want to say they're not like in the honeymoon lovey-dovey. It it's like feels he's like, rescuing her from I know. It this feels horrible... like maybe there's more like something else going on. Okay. Something hidden. Like evil? No. Just like I don't know the full story. Different plan going on. Okay. And so they are, it feels like they're pretending or like masquerading as a couple. Okay. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I'm sure it's literally nothing and I'm sure they're actually a couple. Well, here's the thing. But my weird gut is yeah. like, no. I appreciate when you listen to your gut sometimes and sometimes I don't. But Matt thinks that Thera is a liability mm -hmm. because of anybody oh, here who's going to break. Gonna, oh, still it's her. all the beans. So that's why Noel speaks up and he's like, hey, do you want, you want me to make sure that she never says anything to anyone ever again? Yeah. <laughs> As in murder her? Or I'll murder. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it if yeah. you want. But if like you don't want me to, then I'm or not going to do it. But, like, accident I, I totally can. call that. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> So is Noel, is that good that he's offering, making no. the offer? Well, when Avienda does it, it's cool. But when Noel does it, it's not cool? Yes. Double standard. Yes. Okay. I trust Avienda. I mm. don't trust Noel. Okay. Different. It's different. Oh, my goodness. So anyways, Matt says, no, don't do that. Yeah. That would cause a rift in Julian and his relationship, probably. Uh, yeah. One would say. <laughs> he just kill Julian, too? No? Oh, he just hit everyone. Just like, kill him. Uh, both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Okay. No, Noel. Okay. It was an offer. He made a suggestion. No. He didn't have to say yes to it. Yeah, I wish that he didn't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now, we are going to learn that Matt hasn't been spending very much time in any of the villages. Like, he's not drinking or dancing or gambling. He's having no fun at all. Yeah, he's none. He's spending most of his time on his work back at the show yeah. that he started the very first night after leaving Ebudar. And it's a real rough job. Yeah, and you know what that the job is, right? According to us. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's the hint. And then we get it throughout the chapter. Yes. Now, at this point, too, we learn about Matt's dynamic that's continuing with Egyanin. Mm -hmm. Because they're supposed to be pretending that they're together. Yeah. But... So he's sharing the wagon with yeah. her and Doman. Yes. Which is also weird. Yes. But... Yes. Yeah, because also, like, Bail Doman is Egyanin's... Sojin. Like, so, yeah, like, property, sort of. Uh-huh. Even though that they're sort together. of together married-ish. Uh-huh. Slightly. Yeah. No, they wanted to get married. Yeah. They didn't. Yeah, it's all it's all a very weird dynamic. And he even picks up on, like, some weird stuff that's still happening, and he doesn't understand it. But it's better to just, like, not ask questions, probably. Yeah. And then this is where we learn that Matt wanted Egyanin to come with him... To talk to Tuan. Yeah. Like when he start, So it's the flashback to when he started visiting Tuan and starting this weird courtship, sort of. Uh-huh. Yeah. But Agiana does not want to do that. No, she does. She wants to avoid Tuan completely. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand why, because Tuan is literally like the highest ranking person. Yeah. And she is basically a traitor to the Shanshan. Yes. It's not. And we see, we see what happens uh -huh. from that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not great. No. No, it's not great. No. Okay, well, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come right back to nope. talk about more not great stuff. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, so we're back. Yeah, and it's time to get into the first visit to Tuon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess. If you want to call us the first one. Is this, like, back in time? Or... It's it's a little bit, yeah. It's like okay. it's one of those chapters where it's, like, flash forward, flash back, we get a run through mm -hmm. of, like, the scenes, then we are up to speed, and it's like, what happens next? So it's, like, wonky time-wise. Okay. But this seems to be, like, the first initial meeting Matt has with Tuon. Okay. And that's why the Egiana stuff doesn't go well, because when they left Ebudar, she just wanted to commit some, like, light treason yeah to the shanshan empire well, and she wanted to escape that guy who was looking for her yeah the seeker she that's why i said light treason yeah. and then she ended up basically kidnapping the president of her country by accident so it's not just light treason anymore it's like you did the worst treason that there was well, more like the president's daughter yeah it's like the the future president the one who's probably going to be the next one coming up uh-huh because daughter of the nine moons is like she's the favorite right uh, okay so 
yeah, the light treason turned into like full on 100% treason, and now she's just in a pickle. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, they're going to get to the wagon, and there's more people here than Matt expected. Yeah. So we have Satella Anan, who's the innkeeper lady. Yep. We have Salusha, the bodyguard. Yep. But like. Secret bodyguard. Secret bodyguard. Maid. Yep. Noel is mm-hmm. here. Yep. Tuon is here, and then also Oliver yeah. is here. And Noel's kind of taking care of Oliver in parts, so that's also why he's here, so. Okay. Yeah. And Oliver's here playing stones or something? or Playing, playing snakes, snakes and foxes, foxes. with oh, Tuon. that's his favorite game, right. Exactly, yeah. The stones is like the strategy game yeah. in Randland, where yes. if you're good at it, you're like yeah, a fantastic Yeah, yeah, we'll get commander. to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're not at stones yet. We're not there, no. Ugh, no. okay. Yeah. And this is the part where we get that Oliver chi- uh, chimes in and he's like, ah, Noel's been talking all about the Shara stuff yeah. and all these things. Uh-huh. And this is where we get the mm. piece of the prophecy of the dragon that he just happened to remember. Right. It's fantastic. Weird. He's so weird. Yeah. Okay. Let, I'm going to I'm gonna say the prophecy here just for okay. the record. Okay. And I'm going to tell you the one part of it that made me go... Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. So okay. it is fortune rides like the sun on high with the fox that makes the ravens fly. That one. Okay. Why? That's Matt's ring. Oh. Okay. 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 Sure. Because it's a fox chasing two ravens. Yeah. And the raven or the birds in flight. Or the whatever. birds in flight. It's not specified as ravens. Yeah, but but it could still, be. Yeah. It could be ravens. Okay. Yeah. And then the next part. Luck his soul, the lightning his eye. He snatches the moons from out of the sky. Oh, yeah. Well, like, luck, it, this is about Matt. Yeah. 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 Okay. But why is Matt being named in the dragon <gasps> prophecy? Ooh. Ooh. Well, I mean, he's kind of part of, he's part know, of the whole deal, I right? I know, but he's not the dragon. No, it's prophecies of the dragon and others. Uh-huh. And his buddies. Uh-huh. Right? Okay. Yeah. I like it. That's good pickup. I like it. Okay. Uh-huh. Do you have anything to add to that, or is that just kind of like- What did you say about lightning? And moons? Luck his luck his soul, the lightning his eye, he snatches the moons from out of the sky. Okay, well the daughter of the nine moons, he's gonna snatch her up. Ooh. Yeah. Out of the sky. Yeah. Okay. And then shoot lightning laser beams from his eyes. Love it. Love it. Yes. New superpower. Uh-huh. Yeah, he gets it later. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's exactly. Right. <laughs> you got it. hundred percent. Only thing that makes any sense. <laughs> that's good. Okay, but mostly Matt does not care about any of this. He no. does not want anything linking him to the prophecies. Yeah. And then he's like, <laughs> shut it, Noel. <laughs> don't want to hear you, stupid Tuan prophecies. And then is like, hey, don't be rude to Noel. Uh, you got to say it. There's a new nickname in play it's here. It's not new. Well, it's... It's it's old. It's, it's sort of old, old. It's what she's been calling him since she met him. Yeah, okay. Because he was Tylan's toy. Yeah. So the nickname is Toy. It's just, it's ramped up this this it's chapter. It's not. It's the same. But like every time, even it's, when you don't have to. It's the same. <laughs> it's literally the same. That's this how you is feel? exactly what's ha- what okay. has ha- been happening. I get the feeling you don't care for it. I don't like it. Okay. Drop it. Yeah. <laughs> Drop it, Duan. That's that's how Matt was talking to Noel, and that's why she was like, hey, rude. Yeah. So. Toy yeah. doesn't mean to be rude. Yeah, but it's time for Noel and but Oliver to leave. Get out. It's bedtime for you yeah. guys. Get the heck out of here. Right. So once they're gone, Tuan is like, hey, listen, you have a reason for interrupting me, toy? Mm, there you go. And then Matt gives her his best smile and tries to be polite and then tries to give her a gift. Yeah, this is pretty fantastic. That was very expensive. Very expensive because he knows that the clothes he got for her aren't like perfect. So he's trying to. And this is where the courtship Every kind of starts happening. Every lady loves getting jewelry. <laughs> Ladies love jewelry. Everyone knows that. Yeah. Yeah. How could this go wrong? Right away. I was like, well, oh. <laughs> this is going to go wrong. Immediately. And immediately. Immediately. Immediately no. Yeah. Immediately no. So nobody reacts how Matt is expecting him to react here because Solusha sneers mm-hmm. and Centel just like yeah. shakes her head. Yeah. And then Tuan's like, I don't like it. You want it, Solusha? And Solusha's like, no, I'm not a stripper. Like, Yeah. So, yeah. So she says the Shia dancer, but I just want a little bit of backstory there. because Shea dancer. Shea dancer? Shea? Yeah. Shea? Yeah. So we've had a Gannon saying like, hey, I'm not a servant girl or a Shea dancer back in the Shadow Rising that far back. Okay. But we've also had Amathera, who has made Dakoval 
which is property, and then she had to do the poses, and they're usually scantily clad, and they wear the big jewelry and the transparent veils. Ooh. So that's kind of the reference point for this. Is that Wait, who Thera. in the Shadow Rising said I'm not a Shea Dancer? Agannon. Oh, Agannon. Agannon had mentioned okay. that. So it's a term we've seen a lot, but then we also saw Amathera become Thera and basically be, become be a, one of the dancers right. who does the poses. Yeah, and yeah. And wears the big gaudy jewelry and stuff. I see, so, yeah, okay. Yeah. And that's why this is like almost offensive to so many people in this entire thing. Uh-huh. And then Salusha like throws it at Egyen and she's like, you put it on. Because again, it's the whole, she's done the big treason. Yeah. But she's still kind of playing by Shanshan hierarchy and stuff. Because yeah. she is one of the blood. And she obeys. She puts it yeah, on. Yeah, she does. She does, a, she does a twirl and stuff. Yeah. And Matt and even Satel and Anne are super confused. Nobody yeah. really knows what's happening. Yeah. It's it's all. And Matt's kind of mad because he bought this necklace for two on. And oh, yeah. And she just like threw it away. She gives it to Salusha. Salusha throws He's it like, at Agyanin. Yeah. And now Matt's like, and now it's yours? Like this thing cost me so much money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the horses I could have bought. So many horses. Yeah. Which is equally or more funny when she whips it away afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so you just threw away so much money. Just like give it back to Matt. <laughs> yeah, just return it. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Anyways, yeah, we're not quite we're there not yet. We're not quite yeah. where she's left because she gets her new name. Yeah. Is this what... So this is the flashback from before we saw them the first time? This is, like, the... This is while they're on the road, the first time that Matt is trying to start the courtship with Tuon, and he brings Agyanin along to try to divert some of this, you oh, know... Oh, and then the Lyle win name is the one that Egyanin had picked. She picked Lylewyn, yeah. But now they're like, ah, that's a good name for a Shea dancer. Lylewyn Shipless. Because she, she doesn't even no, have a ship. She got no ships. Yes. Which is a huge thing because oh, such when, an insult. when Matt came to her, but like, that's what a part of the conversation that Egyanin and, and Bail Dalman were having is like, we don't even have a ship. Yes, we have no ships. <laughs> and now she's shipless. So she's shipless. That's her new name. And it's not good. No, doesn't like it. But she sinks to her knees and is like, can I leave? Yeah. And then Solucia says, you can go and you will not let me see your face again unless it's covered by a Shea Dancer's veil. Yeah. And then Agiana leaves. And Matt is just so confused. So confused. He tries yeah. to stick around to ask some questions, but he gets kicked out immediately. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't take. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, and then we get a big explanation like what actually went down because Eggian is still outside this purple wagon. Yeah. And he's like, okay, like what the hell happened in there? That was weird. Yeah. And that's not what I wanted to happen today. Uh huh. So she got functionally like disowned and she, so she was of the blood. And we actually saw her promotion. Yes. And we saw that evolution. Yeah. And she got all of that stripped away. So she isn't one of the blood anymore. She's basically. Not worthy of anything, I guess. Ah, so. uh, too bad. Yeah, so she got the name, she got the new shipless name, and now she's basically a nobody. Hmm, that's too bad. Yeah. I like Egyanin. I mean, you Maybe were... Maybe Solusha will die. But, you, like, she you, were, you were leaving. Like, Egyanin, you were leaving the Shanshan Empire. I know, but it's still, like, don't treat her bad. Yeah, Rude. it's like what you were brought. Like, Rude. I can understand. I can understand why that'd be hard. Yeah. Because you get disowned by your entire society and culture. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not great. Mm -hmm. And then she whips the necklace away. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then Matt's just <laughs> standing there with his mouth open. He hates all of this. But he decides not to say anything else because he does not want to get stabbed. Probably a good idea. Yeah. You know what's interesting, though, and we've talked a little bit about it, is the Satel and Anne is kind of buddy buddies with Tuon yeah. and Solusha. Yeah. Like, she's always there and she's She really she knows sides. how to get in with the... Yeah, but the the odd thing is, like, we know her stance on the the Damani thing and the Shanshan thing. Yeah. Like, she got yeah. her entire family well, maybe out. maybe she's doing some, like, intel. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Like, yeah. what's the plan here? Because she clearly doesn't agree with the Shanshan well, culture. Well, she doesn't want to be in the wagon with the Aes Sedai and the Suldan. That's uncomfortable and terrible. That's true. Where else would she be? Yeah, that's true. That's a good point, too. Like, of all it's the places here. to be. <laughs> this is where she is. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Okay. So yeah, that's basically end of, of, of like the first night, and then we're gonna get the next couple okay, of nights, all right, so, and the next week or whatever. Uh huh. 
So super long story short. Okay. Matt is going to go back. Yep. And then tries to play stones with Tuon. Yeah, he's going to start courting her kind of sort of. Yeah. With the stones game. With the cloth silk flowers. Yeah, so he tries to give a gift first with the necklace. That doesn't go That doesn't work. So then he does the, ooh, gotta keep them on their toes. So he brings a, like, cloth flower to Solusha. Yeah, the fake out. You're like, hey, not for you two on. Uh Uh-huh. For you, Solusha. Uh Uh-huh. You gotta keep them off balance. And my favorite thing is when Matt's like, oh, man, They'd be so pissed off if they knew what I was doing. <laughs> but they can't, they clearly don't. They would never figure yeah. out what I'm doing. I'm so sneaky. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, well, he, he assumes if they knew what he was doing, they would for sure, like, you know, Whip kick him, him out or, or yeah. yeah, beat him or stab him or something. So he's yeah. being sneaky. Yeah. Okay. So at first he's bad at stones. Because he doesn't know what women want, you know? Do, do, should I lose? Should I win? And then he loses because she's actually she's really like, good. you suck. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, okay, I actually got to try here. Yeah. And then it's kind of like a, he wins four to the next seven and there's one draw. Okay, so. okay. okay that's and cool. he continues to bring flowers and gives them to Solusha. Yeah. Until. Well, it's interesting because she's keeping them too. Mm. She's storing them. And she asked for permission, I think, from Tuan. Like, can I keep them? And yeah. It's like, yes, but she's not destroying them in front of his face, which uh-huh. is a total possibility. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing them at like Satella Nan or something. Or, yeah. Yeah. Stomp ripping them up. Throwing stomp, them in yeah. the mud. Lighting them on fire. Yeah. There's, o- there's so options here, people. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the chamber pot? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, throw it in there. Yeah. Okay. But then eventually one night, Matt brings a cluster of silk rosebuds. Yeah, that's the chapter title. Chapter title, yeah. Well, at first I thought the necklace was a cluster of... Yeah. Rosebuds, and I thought I missed that, and then, no, I didn't. So it's this. So an actual silk cluster of rosebuds, and Solucia steps forward and is like, for me, thanks. But Matt just ignores her, sits down, and puts the flowers beside the board. Power move. And sort sort of, of, like, a little towards two on. Yeah, but she doesn't say anything. She doesn't look at it. (laughs) It's all very coy. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she says, I've changed my mind. You play very well. Yeah. And this is where he's like, oh, she definitely means at Stones. Yeah. Because there's no way she knows I'm playing her. Yeah. And they've been playing and he's been winning. And this is the- No, of course she means (laughs) you're playing this game very well. Like- Yeah. The courtship game. The courtship game. game. Yeah. Yeah. Because at one point he also thinks like, oh, I'm using the Stones game to get to know her better. And they start talking. And he's like, oh, I should trust my wife. Yeah. Like he's just given right in. He's like, yep, I guess she's going to be my wife. He tells her about his childhood and his dad and the horse trading and, and, and all that stuff. So like, dude, you're literally dating her. And do you know? Like she knows, but do you know? I don't know if he knows. I don't think he knows. Well, he doesn't <laughs> until we know. Yeah. In a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, turns out Tuon wants to go for walks after dark. She's cooped up. She's super cooped up. And yeah. I get that. And she even says, you can accompany me to make sure I don't run away. Yeah, she's done with these day dates and she wants some night dates out in, you know, nice walking field or something. I don't know. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen, yep. whether Matt is cool with it or not, it feels like. Yeah. But they're going to go on walks after dark, and Satella and Solusha follow behind. This is also hilarious. I love this because Matt thinks, oh, Solusha and Satel must be here to watch Tuon. But it feels like they're watching me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, d- like, yeah, yeah, of course they're watching. They're all here for you. Yeah. Yeah, because he's like, oh, Satal must be watching Solutia, and Solutia must be watching Tuon. No. That's the natural order. It's like, no. buddy. Nope, no. <laughs> you have to have, what's it called? Uh, the person who follows you on the date. Chaperone. 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 That's what's happening here. Yeah. Okay. Sure, that's what this is. Yeah. Don't ask Tuon what she does for fun, though, because that's going to be depressing. I train horses and Demani. Yeah. And Matt's like, what? How, how about those horses? Uh. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh no. Okay. He's like, God. Ah, uh, what? Yeah. Shouldn't have asked that. Uh, okay. 
But anyways. And then she wants to know how many women Matt has kissed, and he dodges the question. Mm -hmm. He's like, no time for that now. The Mostly date's done. Mostly because he has no idea. Date's over. Yeah. So now, one day, Matt starts complaining to Egyanen because everyone in the circus seems to be annoyed with him, and he doesn't understand why. Mm -hmm. Until Egyanen... Who's supposed to be his lover. Yeah, is like... You and your idiot backstory says you and I are supposed to be fleeing lovers, but you're spending way more time with Tuan than with me. Yeah. And that looks bad. You're clearly, like, dating her. Yes. Everyone knows it, man. Of course everyone's mad because yeah. now you're like, yeah, what's happening? Uh-huh. And then Egyanen says, you can't think she'll complete the ceremony, can you? This is good. And Matt's like, what do you mean? What ceremony? And we're going to get a big <laughs> mic drop here. Yeah? Mic drop moment. Yeah, okay. So Egyanen is like, okay, listen, you said that Tuan is your wife. Yep. Three different times that night in Ebu Dar. Yes, I have it if you want to know. Okay, because you're going to tell me exactly We're going to play is? back the scene because oh. the scene is, and I tried to, but the best I could to highlight things in the moment. Okay. But we just need to do a little bit of a backtrack okay. here. Okay, well, first. Yeah. We need to know that when a woman says three times that a man is her husband, and then he says three times that she's his wife, they're married. That's it. That's it. Like, technically, we can have the ceremony, we can have more signed papers, but, like, that's the official, you do those things, boom, you're married. I feel like I said something like this earlier, because you're like, how are they just going to get married? Yeah. And I said, maybe it's going to be a weird cultural technicality thing. You did thing. say that, and it's going to be like a total... Like, we walked <laughs> around the fountain three times, yeah. and now we're married. Exactly. Like, literally, I feel like you did I talked, I like you said did. that. You did. No, you for sure did. Yeah. So, I mean... I get a point. I get a bo bonus point. Nothing's official. She hasn't said it. No, 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 but... But yeah, it's because Matt doesn't understand the culture, culture, and he totally fucked up. So. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, back chapter 31... <laughs> We had when they were escaping. In Witcher's Heart. Yes, okay. when they were escaping from Abu Dhar and Eggy Annan, this is like right in the middle of that action sequence where she's like, that's the daughter of the Nine Moons. Yeah. And she names her and that's when it clicks with Matt and he thinks about the things that the snakes told him and he says softly, she's my wife. And then the people hear him say that out loud and Dolman like makes a choking sound and Eggy Annan starts freaking out at that point because yeah. she knows like, what the heck are you talking about? And then Egyanen tells Matt, you can't say that. You must not say that. And then Matt says, why not? She's my wife. Your bloody daughter of the nine moons is my wife. Okay, so, so that, that's one, three, two, three. So And then that, is that maybe why Tuan agrees to come? Oh, there's more. Yeah, there's more. So let's go into the next part okay. here. Because then Matt, in this chapter, he says... Well, she didn't respond. She didn't say anything back, so it doesn't mean anything. Like, she didn't repeat. Right, yeah. Deals off, right? Yeah. That's not how it works. But Egyanen explains, with no. the blood, it's a little bit different because, like, hey, rulers can say it and they could be, like, literally across Ma the yeah. continent. Yeah. So as long as you say it in front of witnesses, you have a year and a day to respond, basically. Uh-huh. Boom, still married. Yeah. So... In Winter's Heart, then Solutia comes in at that point in that conversation after Matt names that. And she says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, this is crazy. Whatever the omens, we can still fix this situation, guys. So okay. Solutia's like, let's just, like, backpedal a little bit here. Like, quit proposing. Let's, let's not do this, please. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't care what the omens say. Right. And then Matt tries to calm Solutia down because he thinks she's a maid. Yeah. And he said, no one's going to hurt you, I promise. And then Solution's like, yeah, I'll obey you. But if you harm Tuan, I'm going to murder every one of you. Just yeah, so you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's like this weird like sequence where Noel's like, what are we doing, man? Like, are we taking him? Are we not taking him? And then Matt considers everything he knows about Tuan. And he says, we're taking them with us. And then finally, Tuan shows an expression on her face. And she smiles as if she suddenly knew a secret. Yeah. So clearly, whatever the omens say, and she knows, like, he just proposed, like, right. there's a whole bunch of things going on here that, like, Tuan yeah. knows something going on. And I had predicted on. that maybe that Damani that she beat the shit out of, yeah. who predicted her future, yeah. might have told her something along these lines. Like, maybe, yeah. hey, some scoundrel's gonna propose to you, yeah. and then take you, uh, <laughs> kidnap you, and yeah. then, like, Or hey. maybe you're gonna marry a... Marry a... 
not wetlander. Yeah. It's the wrong culture, but you know what I'm... Yeah. The sentiment. <laughs> yeah. The non chan chen The non chan chens Yeah, exactly. The Sean chant Yeah. The... What are they called? Not um, Sean... Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of the options here. The ones who are from Sean Chen. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, but there's a, there's a couple of things. And clearly, like, Tuan knows more than Matt knows about the omens oh, and yeah, duh. the customs. And, well, he's done his part, I guess, uh-huh. of the wedding ceremony. Yeah, so. and then after he learns that, he stays away from Tuan for two days. Yeah, he's like, oh. But there's no use running from this. Well, yeah, because it's like he's literally fated to marry the daughter of the Nine Moons. Like, he's, yeah. he doesn't have an out here. No. So, eventually, we're going to reach a ferry to cross the river, and it's an important crossing where the Shanchen have, like, a lot of military camps set up outside, and there's Shanchen literally everywhere, Friggin and they're everywhere. all checking the horse warrants, and everything's bad, and it's terrible, and Luca's like, this is great, let's so many set up people. and have a show. Yeah, there's a lot of people here, a lot of, a lot of money. I feel like... We need to leave. Mm-hmm. We need to leave. We can't just sit here. While... You feel that way? Yeah. It would be more suspicious to not try to make money. I think they need to leave. They need to take <laughs> off. Matt needs to leave. Yeah. You don't have to be with the circus anymore, man. Well, what's the front of this book? We're traveling well, on horseback, not with wagons. So... Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's nope. people. Nope. Okay. Nope. Let's take off. Let's there's, leave. There's still time. There's still time. There's two chapters and a uh-huh. little bit okay yeah there is <laughs> but if you're really going with the accuracy of the covers uh-huh. versus what's going to happen well, in the get books... two on a blue outfit there we go quick <laughs> ah blue guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the, the whole amount of shanshan soldiers is also why matt's still freaking out yeah because he still doesn't fully trust two on and he thinks she's going to try to escape and this is the perfect opportunity to do so so she doesn't actually say anything. She's like riding on the wagon with she Satel. Could, yeah, she could yeah. just shout for help and it would all be over. Yeah. But then the dice start rolling in Matt's head, even though Tuan has not said a word. Yeah, and the end of the chapter is like a little bit wonky time-wise. Yeah. Because they clearly like got across Made the river. Through, yeah. They probably put on a show. And then during that night, the first night that they reached the river. Oh, see, I thought that they were like setting up here. So, oh, yes and no. Okay. They they stayed, they did a show, and he thinks the first night they were here, Tuan, like, makes a weird demand of him. Like, it's a question, but it's it's a demand. He knows, like, she's demanding something. Oh. And he says, but we well... we don't get to find out what it is, We don't know right? what it is. No, okay. we don't know what it is. Because I was like, am I missing? Because I really thought maybe yeah. it was, and I missed it, but... It's one of those RJ cliffhangers, like, ooh, she demanded something on day one when they're here, and then three days later... Because he, he told Matt her, like, said, I got to think about I it. I will. Yeah, he says, I will do the demand that you asked me of, which we don't know. Yeah. And then the dice stop rolling when he says, I'll do it. And she smiles and at she him. And she smiles. But we don't know what, what the demand is. Okay. And they're clearly, like, they're moving again. So, okay. yeah. All right. It's, it's a loosey-goosey ending. All right. But there we go. There it is. Yeah, okay. Well, Matt did his job in the proposal. So, like, that's good. Yeah, which he didn't even know. It's probably for the best. Yeah. Because if he knew that, then he just wouldn't he do it. He never would have done it. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. That's how fate gets you. It's how it gets you. Yeah. Any thoughts on the two on demand? Like, any inkling of, a, like, what the heck could she no. be asking for? Mm-mm. Okay. Okay. Unless she wants to, like, leave the circus. Oh, okay. Like, let's leave. I don't want to be here anymore. Like, let's... Let's travel elsewhere. Let's blow this popsicle something. stand. Maybe. Yeah. I don't actually know. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Maybe we'll, we'll find out. Before the end of the book? Like, is that what you're saying? Oh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of loose ends. Yeah. Yeah, there is. So. There's a lot of loose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh-huh. okay. 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 All right. Well, let's go on. Let's move on. One chapter again. One chapter. And uh, then we're finishing with the last chapter in the epilogue. Yep. Ooh, okay. Two episodes left. You know, Here we go. I'm feeling optimistic that something's going to happen. One of these three last chapters is my favorite yeah i don't think the epilogue will be interesting okay it's only three pages so like that's okay okay something is going to happen okay (laughs) and i'm gonna be like wow nice (laughs) something happened (laughs) oh man are you hopeful for like a big 
you know, climax to the book, a big maybe forsaken battle, oh or my God, like no. as as other books have that had. That would be so wildly out of place. She's like, whoa, here's a forsaken battle. Uh, which, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll honestly take it. It yeah. would just feel so weird. So Talonan the whole time? You know, honestly, she go. does have a shifty background. Does she, though? Yes. Well, she, okay. Or did we learn her background? I mean, we know a lot of her background. Oh, uh, okay. Like, she's got a family, and she's an innkeeper. No, and... but she knows so much about the White Tower and stuff, and she yeah, knows I mean, the kin, and... Yeah, I mean, she's I in the know. city with the kin. Okay, besides the point, so, okay. Yeah. Okay, all okay. All that. Okay, let's go. Let's leave. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so, before you go and propose to somebody that you don't even know you're proposing to, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted and edited by Danny and Brett. Produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jonathan Reese, Jamie Young, Megan Smiley, Jared Berg, Ricky Morissette, Lance Barden, Charlie Has, Adam, Hannah Green, Marta Thier, and Michelle Forbes. With music by Audionautics. Be sure to check out our Patreon page if you're interested in supporting us and the podcast. We'd love to send you some Patreon-exclusive merch as a thank you, plus you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. And at the time of this recording, we have over 40 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. You can find all that and more at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast. For general information about our show... And information like how to send us shot glasses, how to join our Discord, and how to get in touch with us, visit thewheelweavespodcast.com. And as always, please be sure to give us that five-star review because it really does make a huge difference helping people find us. And if you put your Instagram or Twitter handle in your five-star review on Apple, we select reviews at random to send people some exclusive merch as a thank you. So be sure to do that so you can grab some cool stickers and bookmarks. Be sure to tell a friend, Riyad, because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.